All right, I guess I'll start. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abhishek Jain, and I'm pleased to invite you all to the first episode of the Master of Arts or the MA series by Plante. Towards the end of this session, we will also be having a Q&A session for which I would request you all to put your questions in the live chat box. Today, we're very fortunate to have with us Vivek Menon, a graduate of the 2018 batch of the National Institute of Design, who has also completed an exchange program in Germany in 2016. He then went on to complete his Master of Arts in Digital Direction from the Royal College of Arts in 2020. He has worked as a visual interaction design intern at IBM IX. In this session, Vivek will be speaking in detail on the application process to the Royal College of Arts, as well as the opportunities available during and after completing an MA from the Royal College of Arts. I would now like to hand it over to Vivek to begin the session. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Abhishek, for inviting me onto this platform and for that introduction. Um, I'll keep this session really informal, and I'll start by taking this opportunity to really explain this field to people who may not be as aware, as people say, are about law, medicine, or the fields that are more common. Um, usually, people in the creative field, we surround ourselves by like-minded people, other people from the same industry. So we're in this little bubble all the time. Um, so design itself is a space anyone from any field can get into. Um, it's a very upcoming um, and therefore very exciting field to be in that has huge potential in today's world. Um, it's very easy to bridge the gap between your own past education and design. Um, so I graduated from the Royal College of Art in February of 2020. And prior to that, I had done my bachelor's at National Institute of Design um, in Ahmedabad. And so the words art and design, they often come up. And these these two very these two schools that I graduated from had very different um, ways of functioning, and people have their own opinions about these two two words, art and design, and what they really mean and how they differ from each other. Um, so the general consensus around how people define design or art in the creative industry are that art is about asking question and knowing how to frame the right question from your own personal point of view. Um, design, on the other hand, is about like solving a problem and knowing how to propose the right solution to a given design problem. Um, and it's often about shedding light on someone else's point of view. That's typically a user. Um, um, so an example of art would be like creating an installation made of trash that's, that sheds light on the topic of generating waste. Um, often about like starting a conversation around a particular social issue or something of that sort while design would be about researching how that waste is managed, um, how could it be better managed and building like a communication strategy or a service around it, um, and understanding the different stakeholders involved. Um, so it often involves studying a bit of human psychology, um, something a bit more practical, keeping in mind the user's needs. And so both are highly relevant and crucial fields that carry their own weight and serve their own purpose. Um, so this, to me, is the general difference. Um, and the RCA, along with many other schools today, are trying to bridge this gap between art and design. And they don't see such a difference between the two. And yet there are different schools um, under the RCA which practice each one. There's a school of art and a school of design under the RCA. Um, but RCA is predominantly an art school. And I can say that only because I have previously studied in what is predominantly a design school. Um, so I understand that difference. Um, in that approach. And this is something I struggled with initially at the RCA because I was expected to only sort of pose the question without necessarily proposing an end-to-end -end solution, which is what design expects or insists on. Um, but there is value in both things. Um, things like film or game design is much more in the art sphere, um, even though I just said game design, rather than design. But they're both extremely important fields of uh, creativity. 
and the lines are increasingly blurred as i said so designers need to be more critical about what they make and approach um their work like an artist and artists also need to be making work that's a lot more grounded in real world contexts and scenarios um so although this is the most widely accepted and practiced definition of art and design today there's a lot more critique about what i mean this uh, um this is the practiced definition of design um there's a lot more critique about whether this definition is truly inclusive or has it ended up creating a world where we only see problems that to solve and we only want solutions um does this approach to design include everyone does it see pe- people as users first rather than human beings um is it sustainable enough is it too exploitative in nature our current design approach is too linear in nature um is it a very western definition of design you know because indigenous problem solving techniques in other cultures have uh, have existed for centuries and they're termed craft um and they provide they're seen as providing no design value in that modernist sense so increasingly there are newer fields of design um such as circular design systems design uh which are which seek to think of design much more holistically taking into account uh broader viewpoints and involving a larger number of stakeholders rather than just a single user and a, a business problem um so these newer fields of design are what people at the RCA are more interested in and that was just an introduction so i now i'll actually get into who should apply to the RCA um anyone can apply and it's about asking yourself whether it's the right school for you um so there are hundreds of art and design schools to choose from RCA is one of them and it's certainly uh one of the best for a number of reasons um one of the main ones in my opinion being that it's extremely forward thinking as a school um so everyone is trying to solve not just today's problems but tomorrow's problems as well and anticipating those problems of tomorrow um if you've already pursued um something in the creative field such as a design degree in india then you already have a certain experience and understanding of the field um if you don't have a degree in a creative field um and you want to get in it's important to ask yourself i think why you would like to become an artist um whether it's to create change in some way that you think is beneficial or if you're just looking for a medium to express yourself in um and then look at some of the work done by rca students and ask yourself if it speaks to you or your own point of view um if you aren't from a creative profession already that shouldn't be a hindrance that prevents you from applying um so in my own class there were people who had studied literature prior to coming to the rca i had juniors who had studied political science or psychology um they all had interesting points of view so design or art is very much a personal endeavor and um they only want people who are self aware curious open minded um and that's what they're looking for as uh, so the only advantage i would say that a person who has already studied design um or art pre- prior to the in their bachelor's is the fact that they would already have a portfolio of work and that is important to showcase and it's a requirement to apply to the RCA um so anyone with a portfolio can apply and if you don't have one and you're looking to join the RCA um definitely i recommend start curating one right away and i'll speak a bit more about the details of the portfolio requirements uh, later on now at the same time i don't know if i actually recommend a masters in art or design to people who have already done an undergrad in art or design and what i mean by that is it's not exactly a requirement to have a successful uh, career in the, in this industry it's definitely an added advantage in many aspects but i think it's especially a necessity if you're looking to get into uh, academic or research spaces um so it's a great option if you're changing fields from something else to design but otherwise to be successfully commercial successful as a commercial designer um i don't see the real requirement of doing a masters although it can definitely help you become a more critical and innovative thinker um so when does one apply um the application process i think starts from october right until february and you might hear back as soon as you apply or within a couple of months um i got a confirmed offer by december itself when i had applied um and for the following year so the year starts in september 
and the timeline is surprisingly informal. Um, each course has a limited number of seats, and until those seats get filled up, I think they are willing to accept students, from what I understand. So we had a person on my course um, who literally joined a couple of weeks before the course started, um, who, uh, he, who applied um, a couple of weeks before the course started. But he was um, British by uh, citizenship, so he didn't have to go through the visa procedures that we have to go through as foreign students. So I don't recommend that to um, anyone applying. But I think once you're happy with your portfolio, apply as soon as possible. And um, you will get a call back as, as soon as they look at it. Um, the RC also has um, open days during which you can learn more about the courses and they have both online as well as in-person open days. So if you're lucky enough to be in London, um, I recommend going for the in-person open days. I myself have volunteered during open days and helped um, incoming students understand more about the RC and uh, studying there. So I encourage if you have the opportunity, definitely get in touch with the program head uh, to learn more about any particular course or try to attend one of the uh, open days or a show. Uh, like the show means the exhibition that students put up towards the end of the year. Um, everyone is really encouraging and helpful and they will definitely help you understand more about the courses that you're interested in. Um, so there are courses that vary between 15 months to two years. And there are plans to make all of these courses one year eventually. Uh, and I, I, when I was in the RC, this is what I heard. The rumors were that all the courses were going to be one year courses in the future. Um, and the point of that was to make education more accessible and affordable to students so that they can finish an MA as quickly as possible without having to bear the cost of being in London for more than a year. Um, so to apply, you mainly need a couple of things. One is your portfolio, as I said. Two is a couple of references. And three would be your statement of purpose. Um, uh, but the application is definitely not that complicated. Um, and there is no application fee. Um, to submit a portfolio, they have a portal onto which you submit your projects individually. So you may have a website already, you may have a Behance or a PDF, but you still need to kind of format it in a particular way to upload the images onto their portal. So that is something I recommend um, looking up at, on and uh, trying to understand how to format all of them in a, in a uniform manner, in a cohesive way. Um, from this year onwards, I think I saw on the website that they also need a short self-introduction video as well as references. So when I applied, they didn't require a video. It was a written statement of purpose. So that's something new. Um, they want your statement of purpose in a video format. Um, and once you get through the first round of application with these details and your portfolio, they may or may not call you back for an interview. So that's round two. And the interview will typically be with the head of the program that you applied for. Um, so they essentially want to know whether you're a right fit for the course. And they want to see if you work well with others, because there's a lot of group work involved. And they're looking for people with interesting points of view um, and unique stories to tell. And people have the potential to be molded rather than someone who's too rigid in their point of view. Um, so keep in mind that the head of programs are also looking to kind of curate the batch that they are recruiting. Um, so the cohort is um, essentially, it's about how they how well they work together. And so you have to make sure each student adds to the batch in a unique way, um, because they also want you to learn things outside of the classroom by interacting with the rest of the batch and collaborating in interesting ways. Um, so there are these large studio spaces where most students spend their time together outside of class hours. And that's where they're working, and that's where they keep their stuff every day. So um, that's where most of the interesting conversations happen. And um, so yeah, the, I mean, I'm just saying that they are looking for people who are willing to um, interact with others and not be too uh, reserved and willing to collaborate and would bring an interesting point of view. Um, they also want to see whether your English language skills are adequate enough to keep up with the coursework. Um, and that's something they will check during the interview. As Indians, I think in general, 
largely speaking, we have an edge over other students from other countries, considering we speak English decently well, um, even more than I would say mainland Europeans or East Asians. Um, um, but that was just something I noticed that like the Indian community at the RCA, <laughs> we had this advantage over other nationalities. Um, even the dean of, dean of the school that I was in at the time was Indian and it was in, an encouraging feeling to see her at such a high post. And the reason they want um, someone who can speak and write English well is because of the expectation of um, writing a 10,000 word dissertation. And that's a compulsory requirement of the course as well. Um, so there are also English language classes offered, um, but there is still a level of language that they expect you to have so that you don't lag behind. Um, and coming and then off of that, they also want you to do the IELTS exam. Um, it totally depends from program to program. Some of the heads of program want it along with the application, and some of them will just judge your language skills during the interview itself. Um, but you have to do it anyway because it's a requirement uh, when you're submitting when you're submitting documents for the visa. Um, so you have to do the IELTS exam anyway. Um, once you get accepted, you have to wait for your CAS letter, your CAS, which is Confirmation of Acceptance of Studies. And that's a letter that you get, which is required in order to get your tier four student visa. And um, the visa allows you to stay on in the UK uh, two years after the course. That's a new rule from this, from this year onwards. Um, you get to stay for two more years. When I applied, uh, or even the current batch, uh, we only got a couple of months after the course that we could stay in the UK for. So we had to leave immediately. So this is a really great uh, thing that the new batch has. Um, um, my experience regarding the application process is that it definitely takes time. It's a very slow and bureaucratic process, um, especially after go getting through the interview as well. It takes super long to get the CAS letter, but um, you have to keep following up with it and uh, keep emailing and phoning people and you'll finally get it. Um, this is, I'll talk a little bit more about the portfolio now. Um, so this is a field of work where your, this is a field where your work really has to speak for itself. So you need a cohesive portfolio, but also in going through the course, you're encouraged to develop a co cohesive portfolio. Um, and it's all about your projects rather than words in your CV. And that's what makes this field kind of unique. Um, you have this unique opportunity to showcase your personality through your portfolio. Uh, because This is a very skill-based industry. So it's crucial to keep honing that those skills and, and honing your craft uh, alongside other things. And that should be self-evident in your portfolio. Um, and the assessment system as well is highly qualitative rather than quantitative. So this is also uh, something that can be a refreshing change for people coming from other fields. Um, uh, I, in a portfolio, I recommend having five really good projects, really great projects. Um, and those five are worth a lot more than say 10 average projects. So it's all about um, having five really great projects. And this is true th throughout a cre creative career, uh, whether it's your portfolio to uh, applying to the RCA or any design school or even a portfolio in general after graduating from a design school. Um, I would say that you have to keep a sh limited number of projects that, that speak really well about your personality and your kind of work that you're interested in. Um, so it's not just about pretty like Instagrammable, Instagrammable work either. It's about how well you communicate your strategy, your thought process, um, how well you justify all of your design decisions, um, how well you evaluate whether or not this piece of work was successful in whatever it sought out to do. And um, these are all key criteria in judging a project in one's portfolio. Um, so everyone at the RCA is assigned a personal tutor to oversee their uh, professional as well as pastoral needs. Um, that any student might have. So this is especially important for people who've come from outside fields also, because um, the, the person tutor will help make sure all your projects are on track and forming a cohesive portfolio or story about you. Um, so this is kind of crucial. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's about the, what the story is crafting about yourself and how well your portfolio communicates that. 
Um, so unlike in the US, um, schools in the UK make it much easier to apply. Um, I didn't have to do any sort of external exams like a GRE or provide all that many uh, statement of purposes. It's also generally speaking a little bit more cheaper and affordable uh, than education in the US. Um, I chose the RCA specifically because it felt like I felt like I wanted to be in a place which uh, really opened up my skill sets, and I felt really inhibited by my skills in pure graphic design, which is what I had done before that. Um, so I wanted to be a lot more of a kind of generalist than a specialist, because the courses uh, at the RCA are extremely interdisciplinary, and that's another interesting dichotomy that uh, comes up a lot. You know, being a generalist versus specialist, which one is more successful today, and which one is increasingly more in demand. Um, the RCA in general makes you a bit more of a special makes makes you a bit more of a generalist than a specialist, and that may be something to keep in mind while applying if that's the kind of school you're looking at. Um, but that's also pure, purely a personal subjective opinion, and it may not be everyone's experience. Um, if you want to specialize, it's absolutely up to you, though. Um, you just need to know what skills you are going to benefit you and pursue those skills specifically. And the RCA gives you that freedom, um, and it's up to you uh, to know how you want to exploit that freedom and how you want to manage that freedom. And whether you only do projects that are limited to your interests or you choose to try to do new things. And the best thing to, would be to kind of find a perfect balance between the two. Um, and this is definitely a challenge at times because you're working on so many different types of projects with different types of people, and each one of them is trying to bend the project towards their own practice. You'll end up with a project that is not, it's, it's quite far away from what your own portfolio looks like uh, because the other group mates may have wanted it, may want to take it in that direction. Um, so that's a challenge as well at the RCA. So, or I think probably any master's program with, which involves a lot of group work, that's what ends up happening because you have this prior experience and you're trying to uh, work with other people and also try to manage that and fulfill your own career needs. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Um, so now I'll talk a bit about the RCA itself once you get in. I can compare the two schools that I have studied in, um, but I also have experience in um, other European schools because I did an exchange semester, exchange, uh, semester abroad in Germany, uh, where I studied at a university called Fortsheim University. And I also have friends in various other design schools. So. Uh, from what I understand, different design schools have different formats of classes as well as evaluation. Um, RCA follows a day-by-day -day class system. So like most schools in the UK and US, like a high school kind of system where you have a different class on a Monday and a different class on Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Um, and then that repeats week by week. Um, my previous school, NID, had a different format where you had a one course for the entire week. Um, so you were fully immersed in that one course, and at the end of the week, you're submitting everything for that one course, and um, you don't look at it again, or you come back to it at the end of the semester. So um, you're not you're not thinking about too many projects at once. You're not thinking about uh, what I have on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You're only focused on this one course at a time. Um, so, and I personally prefer that system, but that's not a very common system that other schools follow. Um, so the RCA is a day-by-day -day system. Um, and as far as evaluation goes, also, most art or design schools have a jury system or a pre presentation style exam format, uh, which does provide grades, but they focus a whole lot more on the work you produce and how well you justify the design decisions that you make. Um, so this is a fundamental difference in creative fields versus other fields of study, where you have grades and your progress is measured quantitatively. Um, this can also be like possibly the most alluring feature of an education in uh, or career in the in the creative field. Um, there's also two exhibitions that you have at, at the RCA during your time. One is called a whip show, which is a work in progress show, and a final show at the end of your time at the RCA. So the um, the the whip show will typically be either a work in progress of the final project or a previous project that you've done in the previous semester. Um, and the past two shows from the past two years have been 
online and they've somehow managed to pull it off. So I urge you all to check them out and get an understanding of the variety and scale of the different kinds of projects and the different kind of courses. Um, and the RCA typically has, I mean, the RCA has four schools un, under uh, which they house all their courses. So one is the School of Architecture, they have the School of Art and Humanities, they have the School of Design, and the School of Communication. Um, and different courses, there are many different courses under each of the schools. Um, all of the schools are handled between three different campuses that they have. All are very centrally located in beautiful locations in London. Um, they have shuttle buses that you can use to get from one uh, school to the other, one campus to the other. And my course, uh, my course was called Digital Direction. Um, it's under the School of Communication. And um, it is about uh, newer technologies and how those newer technologies are pushing the boundaries of storytelling. Um, so it's primarily about storytelling and not about technology itself, but it's about how uh, newer technologies are forcing stories to be told in unique and different ways. So newer ways of illustration, newer ways of animation, newer ways of filmmaking that are influenced by things like algorithms and uh, VR and uh, data and code um, and different ways of computational thinking. Um, so th there are all these different schools in India as well for design. And one of the things I found really interesting about Indian versus foreign schools are that Indian schools foster community a lot more while foreign schools kind of lack that co community and campus culture, but maybe that's also just at a master's level because um, students are a lot more rigid and even established in their own respective fields. Um, you know, at a master's level, people, people may not be living together in a kind of hostel setting. Some people are married, some people have kids. Um, they already have their own friend circles. They don't. They want to just go home at the end of the day. They have chores to do. So unlike an undergrad, I felt like that relationship between students is a lot more professional. Um, you still have fun, but like, um, it not. It's not the same as an undergrad. Um, and so, because there's also a huge age gap between some students. Some students are uh, much older than you, and so you have people coming in who've already previously worked at the UN or people who've had government positions and uh, people from different countries and cultures. And um, because the course is also much shorter than an undergrad, um, there's a lot more group work involved. So again, it's it's tricky to navigate. Like I said, you have to sometimes, sometimes compromise between uh, what you want to do and what others want to do. And you end up with a project sometimes that's halfway or doesn't do full justice to your idea. But luckily, you have a couple of final projects which are completely individual, and you get to pursue whatever you want. Um, um, so again, NI, the NID, where I graduated from, um, an Indian design education focuses on adapting yourself to the industry. And um, th therefore, it creates batches of individuals who do extremely well in the industry. But the RCA school of thought is very different. And it's about defining your own practice and carving out a niche for yourself. Um, and therefore, it, I would say it doesn't make you very employable, but in a very good way. Uh, but there are schools like Shrishti, I think, in Bangalore, um, who, which also follow a similar school of thought, where it's like uh, creating your own kind of practice um, and defining your career for yourself. Um, so, but that's also, you know, something that you have to, you have to be ready to take on board if you want to get into this, uh, this field where you have this erratic and unstable nature of, um, of this field. And you have to sometimes work freelance, you have to sometimes work on commissions, you have to take up fellowships, uh, you have to do research, um, rather than, you know, a stable nine to five job. And that totally depends on how you cope with that kind of style of working. Um, and it also totally depends on you. I mean, you can totally join a corporate work environment as well. And uh, that's totally up to you. Um, um, something that takes up a large chunk of time at the RCA and a large chunk of credits as well, again, is your dissertation. Now, that that's something I'll talk about. Um, so your dissertation is um, handled by um, a course called CHS. CHS stands for Critical Historical Studies. So you have CHS once a week where they expose you to different ideas that you can explore for a dissertation. And each school has its own CHS. 
Um, so on all the courses, all the students come together every say Monday and they have CHS together. Um, and finally you branch out into your own, on your own to write your own dissertations. And it's the most essential requirement in the MBA. Uh, in the MA, it's different from your final project because it's the theoretical part of your learning, while your final project is your practical part of your learning. So they can both be along the same theme or feed each other in some way, or they can just be totally different uh, verticals. Um, at the RC, you have this amazing access to workshops, mentors, um, cross campus electives. Um, they have amazing archives and an amazing library collection. Um, they, there's an incubator called um, um, Innovation RCA, which supports business ideas and projects which require some kind of investment or financial backing of some sort. So yeah, it's a really great place to be in. And they have these amazing resources and labs. Um, there is a sound design studio. They have sound recording studios. They have motion capture labs. They have robotics labs, ceramics, resin, uh, 3D printing, laser cutting, VR workshops. Um, and the best thing, one of the best things, my favorite thing was they allow you to borrow equipment um, for how, uh, whenever you want. So things like projectors, things like these expensive, uh, high-grade uh, cameras, uh, VR uh, headsets. They just allow you to borrow all these things and play around with them and completely uh, they, they give it to you with its complete trust and they expect you to make use of them in creative ways. Um, yeah, so that's one of my favorite things about the RCA. Uh, and that's what I think, you know, Indian schools, we don't have that kind of infrastructure that where we can do such things. Um, um, they have uh, courses in collaboration with Imperial College in London. So there's one particular course called IDE, which is Innovation Design Engineering. And you get a dual degree, one from um, RCA as well as Imperial. Um, and there are options to take part in campus, campus electives. Um, the RCA has fantastic contra contacts. So you can apply to all these foreign exhibitions and research organizations. And um, I myself did an elective uh, in one of my terms with Microsoft, where we researched about the future of AI and how it impacts the future of work. Um, and we finally got to present our projects to Microsoft in Cambridge. Um, and there are other people who did projects with the British Library and the VNA Museum um, and with CERN and with the British Airways. Um, so they have these amazing collaborative um, projects that you get to work on. Um, if for someone outside the creative field, I urge you to look at you know, the work of, say, MIT Media Labs, um, if you're not familiar with them. Um, there's a studio called Forensic Architecture, or there's a studio called Superflux in London. And these are all like places that can really inspire you to understand the kind of work that the RCA can help you create, and if you want to be working in such spaces. Um, and I, I, you know, I was quite intimidated by the fact that everyone would be much older and have all this much more experience than me. Uh, because I was going straight for my undergrad. But my brother gave me this great piece of advice uh, before I joined, which was that at the end of the course, um, everyone will be at the same level. And you know, even if they start out at different levels, at the end of the thing, everyone's going to be at the same level of knowledge or skill. And that's exactly what happened. Um, even if we didn't know it was happening consciously, uh, uh, we all ended up at the same level. And we were all learning from each other throughout the course. Uh, and everyone was pursuing it in their own way as well, like at the same time. Um, so the best thing about the course is that it is what you make of it. And so you have to key, you have the freedom to learn any skill and take part in any opportunity. Um, and you need to keep in mind that it's also about pushing your own career forward. And you have to be conscious about what skills uh, will be beneficial to my own career. So I was the type of person who wanted to do everything. And by the end of the day, you know, uh, I wanted to do glass blowing and resin making. But those are not really things that are going to help my uh, career in sort of digital design, unless that's something I go and pursue actively in a much more in-depth way. So I could have integrated digital design into, say, glass blowing in a unique way. Um, but 
that's not something I did. So, but it really depends from person to person. If that's that's how you find your own niche. Um, but they have courses for beginners in Adobe software, um, in all kinds of coding and mixed reality, and uh, those are those are much more things that I pursued uh, because it it helped my degree in graphic design uh, be taken to the next level. Um, so it's really about how you manage that freedom that you have at the master's level because they give you all this freedom. Um, and it's a place to really kind of push yourself and see how far you can go. Um, the, you know, it's really hard to find a job in the UK, if I'm being honest, after the course. Um, even the industry is kind of network-based, and that's true for any industry, but um, there's no such thing as like, a placements uh, scenario, like how they have in India, even NID had a placement system where at the end of the thing, there's there's all these companies coming to hire you. Um, and, you know, most people get a job, but here it's like you have to network and that's the only way to really uh, get, get your way or find your way around. But um, yeah, it's quite difficult if I'm being honest. Um, so some common myths are that, you know, not every, not, I mean, everyone is kind of, it's this really pretentious place where everyone's this artist and they're all like making art and everyone is these elusive, eccentric kind of people. And um, that's not really true. There are people who are doing really uh, interesting things uh, and you, you understand what they're working on once you get there. You know, there are people working with bioplastics, trying to uh, understand the future of, chemicals, there are people trying to make their own uh, lab-grown gemstones, there are people using mushrooms to create uh, new materials for architecture, there are people um, designing the future of transportation, the future of cities, the future of fashion, and if you're really proactive enough, you get a chance to uh, not only work with such people, but to be such people, like you get to be a part of such conversations. Um, and another myth would be that you need to be creative um, to get into this field. Uh, creativity is something that can be learned and groomed. Like it's not something that is like um, a thing on its own. You know, it really depends on what you're interested in. If you want to get into painting, then you need to paint. But um, there are also courses like service design, and um, there's a course called GID, which is really interesting. And they're really all full of really diverse people with varied skills, and there's no one way to kind of measure creativity. Um, so it's really up to you and how you balance that. Um, but you have to make it evident in your portfolio. So like I said, the portfolio is a requirement um, to get into the RCA or to any design school or to this field in general. Um, so that's a tip that I would give um, any aspirant, you know, um, have a strong portfolio. I'm willing to review anyone's portfolio if that, if they'd like. You know, please feel free to contact me uh, personally on LinkedIn or on Instagram or wherever online. Uh, I have a website which is uh, the vivekme dot com, so v i v e k m e dot com, and you can find all my links there and my work as well. Um, but that would give you an example of what a portfolio also looks like, is it? Um, you know, another tip I would give an aspirant is that <clears throat> the best thing about a master's is that you already have skill sets of a bachelor's, you know? So if you don't get in this year, you can always just try again next year and do something else, like earn some industry experience in the meantime um, or work on your portfolio. You know, unlike a bachelor, bachelor's where there's like a limited number of options after high school, um, you have much more options after doing a bachelor's already. So um, just take it easy and just apply and you have nothing to lose really. Um, you can always just try again next year. Um, yeah, other than that, I would say um, London is a really great place to be in. Um, it's a really exciting, uh, very cool. It has a really cool vibe. Um, it's a great place to live and study. It's very expensive and very cold and the weather is terrible. Um, but uh, it's really a fun place to be in, and I really miss it. Um, but the, the the city in which uh, school is in is also extremely important. Um, so even NID being in Ahmedabad had its own kind of 
um, culture around it. You know, there was the Ahmedabad culture. That's um, NIDs are very conscious about where they're starting, in which cities in India they're starting uh, new campuses. But even in general, you know, other design schools that you're applying to, the city is really important for the for the school itself because because I think so much of the work you're doing revolves around that city. Um, that's your user group um, that you need to be doing research in. Um, and yeah, I think I think a really diverse place is really important for a good creative school because that's where you meet interesting people and have interesting conversations that push the boundary of your discipline. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, if anyone has any questions, they can feel free to contact me later on or leave it in the chat. Thanks a lot, Vivek. I think that was a very, very detailed session. I think you have covered everything from the basics of how to apply to also your experience and also what are the merits of even doing this course. That was actually just brilliant. I think I actually just have one question. This is that sort of building up on something that you mentioned. Uh, since portfolio is such a strong and important requirement for the whole application process, yeah. would you suggest that it actually makes sense that, you know, you let's say take a drop year where you go and work with a company full time for one year or two years, and then actually try to consider applying for these master's programs. And also as a follow up to that question, do you also think that doing some kind of work in between, let's say your UG degree and your master's program probably helps you get more clarity as to which specialized area you want to take a master's in. Yeah, okay, that's an interesting question. Um, so I um, did an internship with IBM for six months. That was a part of the requirement of uh, my bachelor's itself where I had to get some industry experience and do my final project with them. Um, and it's really different for different people. Some people are really uh, confused about what they want to specialize in. And I somehow didn't have that confusion. Like I for sure knew I wanted to study immediately because I had in, in that corporate environment, I felt like if I stay here, if I don't do my master's right away, I will get stuck here forever uh, because it's so easy to just get lost in that corporate world. Um, and then not be able to do a master's. But I knew I wanted to do a master's. Um, but it is expensive and it is something you get to do only once or twice. I mean, if you're lucky, twice maybe. Um, so yeah, you have to make sure you're doing it in something that you really enjoy and in a school that, um, but having work experience definitely helps. Um, especially for people who are confused and they don't know what to pursue. Um, so I had actually, I had had an interest in something called data visualization. Um, and the, that was something I was actually wanting to pursue a master's in uh, during my time at IBM. Um, and someone told me about the, uh, a course called information experience design at the RCA. And that's how I got um, interested in the RCA at the time. But then I realized when I applied that uh, the course there was not exactly what I was looking for. Like information experience design was not exactly about data visualization. It was about something else entirely. And um, so they looked at my work and they recommended this course for me instead. And they said, you know, this is a, this, this would be much more what you're looking for. And then it was true. Like I researched more about that course and I did that course instead, which was called digital direction. Um, and so, you know, I just kind of, I am I was the kind of person who just kind of took it on board and um, I thought there is going to be some value from this for sure. Um, even though I didn't fully research, you know, some people do their complete cohesive research about like, this course is gonna get you into this uh, job and like um, these many people from this course get hired in these many places. I didn't do all of that research, I just kind of, um, trusted that this would be good for me and have some value for me. And I went to board and did, did this course and it was really great. Um, and I have no regrets doing that course. But um, yeah, like you said, is it recommended taking a gap year to um, get a portfolio ready? Um, if, you, if you are joining uh, you know, the RCA from a completely different um, field, then maybe, yeah, I would recommend kind of taking time to get a portfolio ready. But like I said, you can also work alongside and just try again the following year. 
um but if you if you already come from a creative background just it, it's important to really put all that work together in a cohesive manner tell a comprehensive story about yourself and um uh create that portfolio um but yeah i think there's no right answer right like it depends from person to person um some people um really need to work in the industry for a couple of years but another thing i would say is that um it's definitely better to have a couple of work, years of work experience before you do your masters um because it would be easier to get a job um in in the uk and get because they want to sponsor you with a visa and everything um it's easier to get a job when you have work experience rather than someone who's just ha- had a a uh, bachelor's degree prior to their masters so yeah from that point of view if you want to stay in the uk um definitely i recommend having a couple of years of work experience yeah i think that answers the question and i think that's a very very interesting answer so thanks thanks for that vivek i think that also brings me to the end of the q and a session i don't think there are any further questions so i would just like to thank you again on behalf of team plant for taking out the time to come for this session trust me it was very very useful and i'm sure a lot of students are actually going to view this session and are going to be able to apply for this course and actually make better applications at that so yeah. thanks a lot vivek thanks so much abhishek thank you for having me